A poor ground is one of the primary reasons for energized fence failure. It's usually something that's skimped on. It's not something that's usually visible above ground. It's a below ground thing. What we recommend is using galvanized ground rods. We're using galvanized wire. We should be using galvanized ground rods matching metal for metal. We also find that galvanized does not react with many different types of soil chemistry like copper ground rods do, maintaining the quality of that ground. I like to see a minimum of three ground rods on any given fence. Those ground rods should be placed at least 10 feet apart. If they're closer than 10 feet apart, um, they tend to function like a single ground rod. We wanna take advantage of uh, any moist soil conditions to put the ground in, whether that's a low spot or under a drip edge on the north or east side of a building where it's more shaded, uh, can be a nice moist spot so that it ensures we have a quality ground during a dry period. As far as bigger fences, additional ground rods may be necessary. I usually like to figure at least one ground rod for every half mile of fence. Um, some manufacturers go by the jewel rating of the fencer. Um, I found that in certain soil conditions or dry conditions, that's not enough. So by going with one ground rod after the initial three for every additional half mile of fence, uh, we can ensure we have plenty of ground rods. And then testing, you wanna test your ground. And each manufacturer usually uh, offers suggestions on how to do that. Um, the most common is placing a dead short on the fence about 300 feet away from your existing grounding system going back to your existing grounding system, driving in an energized fence post by itself using a digital voltmeter and checking to see if there's any voltage on that. And if there's less than 400 volts there, you should be good to go. If there's more than that, you may need additional ground rods in the system.